Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris, where we are currently, apparently selecting all of those stations, okay cool, where we are currently working our way out this way to try to block the Ta aliens from expanding into Ebonar. That is our current goal and we will build the starbase out there as soon as we can. We are lacking influence for that, so we're going to have to chill on expanding over this way for the time being, but that's okay. Let's bump this up to fast speed, there we go. And we're also going to be interested complete. eventually in getting ourselves a few additional ships. But for now, that's not strictly speaking necessary. So we'll hold off on that for the moment. The UES India here is not really complete. going to be doing anything for a little bit. We're going to move down into Ebonar with, from the P-94L Singularity. And we did get a first contact event pending here. So let's take a look. The noise is a mixture of threatening booming noises and what sounds like grinding of metal on metal continued unabated for several minutes, punctuated occasionally by a howling noise that sent a chill through everyone who heard it. Just as Envoy Hubert Javin thought that the noises had died down, they started up again, louder than before. With a wince, he switched the receiver off. He turned to the gathered crowd of officers, some who were cowering behind their seats. Well, that was quite something, he said weakly. It is hard to imagine that a species making the noises we've picked up from the Ta aliens could be anything other than hostile. Naval officers already fear the worst, and assume we'll soon be at war with them, but calmer heads suggest we'd be better off waiting and seeing. Well, we could prepare for war. Increasing our ship build speed. Our main problem with ship build speed, of course, is our alloy, alloy production here, but we'll prepare for war. There we go. Let's go. We have a lot of things that we want to work on here. And we're being pulled in a lot of different directions, as is often the case in early game Stellaris. So that's fine for now. I do definitely want to get that star base built. We're lacking three months worth. Okay. The Slurpanor Foundation, huh? Okay. We have gathered considerable data on the inner workings of your anatomy, humans. One might even say that we know you. Inside out. So they're a theocratic monarchy of, e of evangelizing zealots. You must throw away your old ways, Slurpinor. Okay. The news that we have encountered intelligent alien life for the first time has been received with mixed feelings by our populace. This confirms what we had long suspected. We're not alone in this galaxy. Each new alien species we encounter represents both an opportunity and a threat. We must be wary. These particular Xenos have a level of technology similar to our own, indicating that we achieved spaceflight at roughly the same time. This changes everything. Okay, so they established communications with us. Sure. We need one more month tick to build our starbase in Ebonar, and we will definitely definitely upgrade that. So they close borders with us. We will reciprocate. We may even declare rivalry on them, but uh, we'll, I think, hold off on that for the moment. We'll get this starbase built, and then we're going to head off this direction. Fantastic. Survey complete. So our scientists develop new skills. Always good. And I would like to move over to Sirius here, because we're going to want to settle Sirius 3 as soon as we can. It's only 65% habitability, which kind of surprises me. What's the habitability of Alpha Centauri 3 here? Construction complete. 70. Okay, got it. Go ahead and research that. That's only 84 days. Not a problem. Cool. So we can definitely see that we're going to want to survey out this direction. That'll be absolutely fine. And influence is our primary issue right now. We don't have any factions for the moment, and we will get those, but that will help us a lot. A massive crater on Euchromia 2 appears to be the re result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exiting a hyperlane at maximum velocity rammed the planet for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. 
The UES scout has picked up residual subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field, but as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. Remarkable. Ooh, an alloy in Seoberg. That's nice. That's very, very nice. Anomaly detected. Uh, that's a 150 day. I'm going to go ahead and research this one, though. I think that one's absolutely fine. We'll research it, and as soon as we have enough influence, we'll build the starbase in Sirius. We'll build our mining stations in Ebonar, and we're also very, very eager to get this starport upgraded here. Survey complete. We're going to need defenses on this border, almost certainly, because Technology we're definitely going to fight them. If they're not going to fight us, we're going to fight them. So this technology has been researched. Cool. Hmm. Honestly, I think we'll go for afterburners here. Again, a little bit awkward with our technology generation there, but I guess it's okay. We do have a lot of energy credits at this moment, and I would like to start clearing off these tile blockers. That'll be great. And this science chip is not doing anything right now. I want to continue to survey over this way. I'm wondering if this dead ends or if this just connects over here. We'll see. Attempts to scan the object in high-speed orbit of ONA 89T have been unsuccessful. The object quickly falls below its event horizon, and the UES Galileo's instruments are simply unable to keep up. While ONA 89T's gravitational pull is strong, that alone does little to explain the object's extreme momentum. Either the object itself possesses some extraordinary properties, or there is some gravitational phenomenon at, at work here. The object's velocity appears to be increasing over time, and science officer Wei Lin suspects that it may soon be thrown out of orbit, even without outside interference. So we could try to slow it down, attempt to halt it, or get away from it. We will try to slow it down. We'll see how that goes. The drone successfully intercepted the unknown object's orbit. By latching onto the object and then thrusting in reverse little by little, the drone was eventually able to direct it to the UES Galileo for retrieval. The object looks to be some kind of box constructed of alien material. Vein-like ridges meander along its side, congregating on the top in some kind of sphere-shaped mechanism. We can only guess at its contents. So we can open it, we can study it, or we can get rid of it. And I usually, like, my logic train here usually is we study it because we can open it after. I don't think it actually works that way, but we'll study it. Long updated. Cool. We'll research that. That's going to be a pretty long study period. Okay. So we're going to finish surveying CO Berg here. And then I would like to research our anomalies complete. in this system. Then we come back to Procyon and excavate, and then we investigate the bowel colony. Is the overall concept for right now. Okay, so Ebonar is done constructing. We'll move into Avior here. And when is Ebonar's star park going to be Anomaly upgraded? Detected. A few days here. Cool. Scans indicate the presence of a foreign alien-made object on one of Seoberg 6A's many frozen mountaintops. We'll go ahead and look into that. That is a nice and short one. Colony okay, so our colony on Alpha Centauri is now done. Beautiful. First things first, we're going to build a city district here. I would also like... to build a medical center here, but we don't have that tech yet. So we'll hold off on that for the moment. And the Ebonar Starbase is detected. almost done now. There we go. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this moon. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be a sign of something more. We'll research that. And in Ebonar, we are, of course, going to build a gun battery, a missile battery, and then I think we'll go for, like, a disruption field generator here, just to make sure that their shields are substantially weakened. We can also finish off our discovery tree, and this is huge. So we get our researcher upkeep reduction. That also gets us 10% increased research speed, which also gets us 10% increased research speed. Beautiful. 
so that's absolutely great. The UES Galileo has recovered an elongated metal box from the surface of Seelberg 6A. Clusters of small perforations on five sides lead science officer Wei Lin to believe it is not a container, but some sort of aerosol dispersal device. Initial tests seem to confirm their suspicions as trace aromatics still emanate from the object. A special project has been issued to confirm whether this might be an information-carrying device constructed by some alien race communicating primarily through the secretion and reception of atmospheric-borne chemical compounds. Smells. Malodorous. Long okay, so what do we need for the olfactory study? Yeah, we need a science chip. Okay, we'll uh, hop on over there, and we will control shift right click research this to append it to the front of the list since we're right there fantastic so we're going to go ahead and build a starbase in sirius Special there we go complete the box is indeed a document of a sort science officer Waylin admits they've been hoping for a historical record or some other kind of codex significant to whatever culture left it behind but they were disappointed the true nature of the aromatic box seems to be a collection of fairly short narratives, which, going by the rapid changes in odor towards the end of each se sequence, are intended to be surprise, or be interpreted as comedic. The techniques used to store and reproduce specific smells is of interest, but the tales it tells are not. The crew of the UES Galileo left with the uncomfortable feeling that they've unwittingly become intimately familiar with what certain gaseous byproducts of alien digestion smell like. However, Wei Lin is unwilling to specify as to why the box was dumped on this frozen hellscape of a planet. Interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to have Sirius done soon. We are electing a new Commissary General. That's fine. A micro-singularity recently intersected Epsilon Eridani 1b, passing straight through the core and emerging on the other side of the moon. The encounter does not seem to have caused any permanent damage, but it has altered the energy output of the planetary core slightly in a way that defies our current scientific models. Further study may be warranted. Okay. So, three physics research there. Nice. Okay. So we're going to finish up in Seoberg very soon here. We're going to grab our two physics research here in Sirius. We have a new ruler elected, and what is their mandate? Let's check the situation log. That's edicts. That is not a situation log. Why am I pressing edicts right now? <laughs> okay, so what is our mandate? Is it not popped in yet? Oh, consumer goods production. Okay wants to bring our consumer goods surplus up to at least six per month. We're at 10 per month. So we're already there. Cool. They declared a rivalry on us and we will definitely reciprocate that. We want that half a point of influence per month. Anomaly so that's beautiful. Detected. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Epsilon Eridani 1D, practically begging for some archeological work. Well, we'll go ahead and do that. There's also an archeological dig in Euchromia. The Ganges is still just chilling. This is a pretty solid system as far as minerals go, and science, too. Not bad at all, there. Once we're done in Sirius, we will go move to Seoberg, and we definitely want to colonize Sirius 3 as soon as we can, which is immediately. So we will get that started. Fantastic. Construction complete. How much influence do we need here? 31? Sure. We'll have that reasonably soon. We're gaining 3.67 right now. An abandoned amusement park, huh? The structures on Epsilon Eridani 1D are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Elsa Meyer notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that to the builder's alien eyes, they might have been a cutting-edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us Hoonmons, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Hoonmons. Oh boy. <laughs> Every time. Every time. So this continental world is also only 65%. Uh, asteroid impacts. Okay. And what do we have here? Weak magnetic field. Sure. 
So this would be a really good industrial world for us. That's for sure. And we can even do some mining here. For Seoberg, I'm thinking about having this. There's no actual boost to it, but I... Well, actually, we should have Alpha Centauri be a science world. So let's designate that right now as a tech world. Survey complete. There we go. I'd love... Oh, I didn't uh, mean to cancel that survey order. I'd love to grab this right now, but we can't do this because of influence. We want the influence Survey for Seoberg complete. anyway. We want to get another colony going as soon as we can. So that is our current top priority. Looks like this just connects together. So that's absolutely Special fine. Project. We complete. can head out over this way next. Finally, our scientists have managed to peek into the alien box without compromising the container itself. By utilizing an advanced type of sonar, they've been able to identify its contents. The contents are puzzling, or at least unexpected. The box holds three small vials, each filled with an unknown liquid. The box is safe to open, but it will require further research to understand how. Okay, so we got ourselves some physics research from that. That's cool. We're not going to sell the box. We are just going to open it, and then we will crack it on open. Unfortunately, that is net negative, but it does offset the cost a bit. A fierce plume of flame sears the heavens of Earth as a comet skirts the upper stratosphere. The sheer power evident in its cosmic trajectory has made a profound impression on the capital's populace. They liken the intractability of its path to the inevitability of the Human Star League's ascension to galactic supremacy, to victory. Okay, so our city district in Alpha Centauri will be finishing up shortly. There's nothing else to really be be doing there. But hey, factions, this is very good. This will boost up our influence pretty dramatically. A new faction has recently been gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Human Star League. Led by Governor Valentina Pulacheva, they call themselves the Electoral Freedom Network. Their members work for equality and justice for all denizens of our empire. A disgruntled faction will be a source of trouble, but one that approves of the government's actions could prove useful. And indeed... Oh yeah, they generate influ or they generate unity now, not influence. Ah, uh, I forgot about that. That's less useful than I thought. Sad. It used to be influence. It there is clear evidence that a massive space battle took place in close orbit of Valhall 2A at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface of one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters from stray weapons blasts, and scans from the UES Galileo have picked up several hulks on the ground. Though these wrecked ships are all in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains at all after the damage they must have sustained is a testament to their advanced design. Science Officer Wei Lin is preparing an expedition to sift through these derelict hulks for any valuable technologies. Long do it. Updated. Absolutely do it. Let's see what we've got. We'll mount this graveyard exhibit. Ex ex I was going to say an exhibition. It it's not that. It's an expedition. <laughs> cool. So we're going to be colonizing Sirius soon, and we can see that this definitely connects together over here. So if we get Cytine, then that guarantees that we have all of this. Anomaly detected. Uh, we'll leave that be for now. That's 600 days. That guarantees that we'll get all this if we get this as well. Cool. We're going to be able to grab Seoberg right now. And that's great. Anomaly detected. Uh, go ahead and research that one. That one's only 67 days. No big deal there. And I'm wondering, let's let's actually send an envoy to spy on these guys. Let's get that going. We'll need to get some information on them soon soon enough. Special project complete. The team under Science Officer Waylin has finished their expedition on Valhall 2A and returned to the UES Galileo. Sadly, the wrecked starships on the surface were too badly damaged to recover any useful technologies. The vessels were clearly very advanced, however, and we could gain valuable engineering insights if we analyze the way they were designed. We should consider the construction of a permanent science outpo outpost in orbit. Okay, so three extra science tech here. That is engineering Anomaly tech. That's detected. great. 150 days? I'm going to leave that one be for the moment. Asteroid P1XR1 is pockmarked with craters from weapon blasts and appears to have been used as a target range by someone roughly two millennia ago. 
Residual energy readings suggest they tested increasingly exotic weaponry, including subspace bombs and some kind of singularity generator. Our scientists would be interested in studying the unusual energy echoes that remain. Cool. Take a look at it. Construction complete. So we're done in Seelberg now. We'll build our mining stations there. Once we're done with that, we will come up here and build research stations in Vohal. That'll be great. While conducting surface scans of Vohal 1, science officer Wei Lin and the crew of the UES Galileo discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They've not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We've prepared a special project to translate the text. Long cool. Updated. Let's do it. We need the science ship in orbit. Okay, we'll control shift research. Cool. Technology discovered. So that's all fantastic. And yeah, we've got those excavations there too. Edict's fund has come up. That's absolutely great. Pop growth speed is really good, but I think society research from researchers is the more important thing right now. So we'll grab that for the moment, and I do want to do something, but I've completely forgotten what it was. Oh, right. I want to go into here, and I would like to research subsidies. Upkeep is currently 50.7, and our edict fund is 35. This will cost about 16 per month. But let's go ahead and do that and get 10% researcher output. Beautiful. One of our politicians on Earth has carelessly misplaced a bundle of sensitive materials, including an encryption key, whose very existence outside of government facilities is a gross breach of protocol. Our domestic authorities are, are scrambling to switch security platforms, as it's quite possible these materials may have fallen into hostile hands. Well, we could definitely fire them. A politician is fired and demoted. Done. We'll fire the incompetent. Fantastic. So we also want to send out another colony ship over here as soon as we can. It's a little bit low habitability, but it should be fine. It's not going to be as low as, like, this tomb world. That's for sure. We want to get these colonies all developing just as quickly as we can. So that will be great. Colony. We'll get that underway. Science officer Wei Lin has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Vilhal 1. It is a memorial for an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They were apparently exterminated by the creators of the mural, a fact that they seem to regret. Given that the mural has been dated to be in excess of 300 million years old, it is likely that its creators are also extinct by now. Perhaps most interesting of all is that the material the mural was made of, despite its age, is in remarkably good condition. So we gain some engineering research from that. Fantastic. Technology discovered. There's Afterburners finishing up. And next, a little bit gross here, I think we'll go for standardized Corvette patterns. There we go. Survey complete. So our survey of Cytine finishes up. That's absolutely great. Once we're done in Valhall here, we're going to move out into Euchromia. And our next construction project, of course, is a star base out over here. We're just waiting on influence. We knew influence would be a crunch survey for us. Complete. Ah, go ahead and research that. That's only 67 days. Not bad at all. Construction complete. And the uh, India has finished its construction in Vohal. Cool. So this connects in like that. Fascinating. Our crew aboard the UES Scout report that the Afashan 6A shipwreck appears to be the result of an unexpected geomagnetic solar storm. The supply ship suffered a complete loss of life support systems and sustained inoperable damage, drifting until it entered Afishan's... Actually, how am I going to pronounce that? Afshishan? Maybe something like that. 6A is gravity well. There are no survivors. The ship's cargo hold does indeed contain a notable amount of minerals. However, the captain of the UES scout cautions that the construction indicates Slurpanorian design. It is highly likely that the minerals belong to the Slurpanor Foundation, and they may be displeased should we lay claim to their shipment. We're not going to risk an altercation because we want influence, much more than we want the uh the minerals 
So we're not going to risk an altercation. Influence is far more important to us here. We need to expand out this direction. And Special we can do that much more quickly. Complete. The alien box has been opened. At long last, our scientists have penetrated the outer material of the alien box. The three small vials inside are indeed filled with different liquids, one red, one blue, and one green. The liquids are less alien than their container and scientists have identified, and our scientists have identified them as primed gene modification mediums. For reasons beyond our understanding, the solutions are quickly deteriorating outside their alien container, but there should be enough time to synthesize and apply one of them to our species. It has been confirmed that the results would be positive, but exactly how remains to be seen. Well, we're going to go with the green solution here. I think. I have no real reason for this, but we're going to go with it. Let's see what happens. Earth does need a job. And on Earth, I think we're going to go for an, another industrial district for the moment. The green gene modification solution has been successfully administered to the, hu to the human people. Based on preliminary observations of early subjects, the solution appears to improve our ability to adapt to our environment. Hey, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Humans, we've received word of our downed supply ship's cargo. We would like to extend our gratitude to you for taking the time to recover it without the need for Slurpinorian intervention. And 100 influence. That's so huge. And with that, it is about time to put a, to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, our influence is already gone. Next episode, we are going to continue to expand. And I just realized this isn't connected to anything. That's amazing. So now we need to get this as a really solid choke point. That's really, really good. Okay. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Kadra, Raw Potato, El Michinazi, Justin Everett, Emiliano Cambron, Martin Lawrence, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.